city. They are looking for the leader. They will come after you. The military will not be there to protect you. You are on your own. You are on your own. I take a critical example in um, Bamenda. Uh, there was a time uh, this quarter they woke up and they said, okay, we need to form semi, uh, so, yes, uh, vigilante groups, uh, sub quarter, and put sub quarter heads just to see how we can live in one piece and harmony. The guy said, no, we don't want that. And behold, within a twinkle of an eye, it ended. Because if you continue that, we must continue with this activity. You are doing that at your own risk. So it is not as easy as we think to say that the civilians should rise up and denounce the atrocities of this. Of course, they are tired. Yes, they really want a way out of it. But their hands are tied. So who do we turn to? We turn to the government. We turn now to the head of the state and we tell him that, look, it is not working. Things are not going. It is time you act. We are not saying you have done nothing in a bit to solve the problem plaguing the English-speaking regions of Cameroon. You have done. It is there. But however, it has not remedied the problem. If plan A is not working, it is time we look at an alternative, which is a plan B, to see how we can get out of this order. So in a nutshell, Mr. Liu, we, we, we are here to put our own little contribution to see how we can all gain back the peace mm -hmm. that we've always known Cameroon to be. Okay. Uh, Mr. Liu, I just want to add that we have seen villages that people came up and they drove amber away and there's no amber in that village. Are those people in those villages having two heads? These are the things we should uh, make the people. There are villages that have come up to say we don't want and they stop the guys and the guys are not in their villages. These are the things we should encourage and tell our people to do. And I see today, the worst about all this nonsense is that we are the ones killing ourselves. The United Nations will not talk. They are not looking at us now like fools. They're all this uh, African Union, all these organizations, they don't talk. We are the ones killing our own. They look at us like fools. Even presently now in this country, the Francophones, they still look at us like fools. We are the ones killing our own self, trashing, whipping our own grandmothers, killing pregnant women. We are the ones there, Anglophones, Anglo-Saxon culture. We are the ones Anglophones killing our own self. We are like injured in front of everybody. Because look, they are the United Nations spoken. All these uh, European Parliament have just spoken. They are looking at us now, us killing ourselves like fools. Yep. So it's time for us to get up and stop this. Yeah, for, for, remember we've spoken about this several here, and um, you are short Cameroonians that they are taking down the notes and that they were going to come, but we are six, seven years. The national community is growing the more silent about what is happening in Cameroon, even when we are faced with such attacks like what we lived last last night in um, early this morning in Manfe. Well, uh, are, I they are, they wait are they waiting for the cop to be fuller than it is today? Uh, I must be honest here, Mr. Liu. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is six years, seven years going, and we keep turning round and round, and uh, you have quite been getting us to educate the population here mm -hmm. on what should be done. Mm -hmm. First, before I come to answer your question, when I hear somebody on air says rice, you see where I begin to say that something is wrong. You don't have an arm, and you say people have risen somewhere, have, have risen somewhere. How many places have people risen somewhere? And what are the consequences of those who rose up? Take Bobanke, for example. People are still in custody as I speak. Some have even, or, 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 I think about two were killed as I got in that sad note there. And these were some of the people they say they had risen against Amber on the way calling on this and that. Look at the consequences we're talking about here. Let nobody deceive you in his air condition office in Douala. That rise, rise. Because to rise against an armed somebody is taking the highest risk on earth. I'm not saying it's not, I'm not saying it's something that we should encourage. But how do you rise like what my brother was talking here? We need to value life. A politician will come on air and tell you, rise, 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 and he's in Douala. Air condition, Mr. Kedia, enjoying himself and fitting and looking very fat. And tells you in the village, rise. When you'll be in trouble, Kedia will not be there. He'll be blowing grabber here today, hot, tomorrow up, and all the like. We don't do that. Mr. Leo, the truth in the whole issue is that, as I said, there is no that's been taken. With the international community, they have what they call the red line. Operandi. They have a way of qualifying, uh, of qualifying uh, what they call uh, uh, political issues in various countries. When the way they qualify is not the way we look at it. Now, if you look at it, they have hot uh, files on their table. Somalia is there. It's, it's, it's quite boiling. 
We have Middle East, Israel and Palestine. That has even come of recent. And even overshadowed the issues of Kivu in the northern regions of uh, Katanga and other like in DRC. These issues have come and even made them, they have even forgotten and considered because while they are thinking of solving a particular issue, another one comes up overnight and becomes hotter than the previous one. And so sometimes it will take time, but as I said, all crimes are being documented. I can assure you that as the crisis is coming to an end, people will stand trial in a special tribunal. I've been saying this. Whether you were a minister or you were a general or you were a spokesman to whatever group, a time is coming when we will be behind, will be behind the dock answering questions in relation to what happens in the area and the role we played. Rwanda showed us that. When Rwandan genocide came, people said, no, 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 it was over. But 20 years after, even some of the men in Kigali were even were, were handpicked in Europe when they were almost already old. Even, and now, they still even now they are still picking up people. The man for Hotel Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda was also picked up for recent. Okay. Okay. So you can discover that once crime against humanity is concerned, it is a matter of time. The only thing that can save you is if you die. As long as you exist, even we look at Manfred, we are lamenting. That's why I say when we speak water in our mouth, it reflects where we come from. The issue is not a look at the social in Boya. That a council sits. Boya Council, for example, others are emulating in the southwest and northwest. And on ghost town days, you go and seal the shops of people. When you seal on Monday, Tuesday, they rush to the council and pay to the five fifty thousand francs. When they open you wait again after about two, three weeks, because they will lock every morning because they are afraid of the fear of the unknown. The mayor is sleeping with military. They move around with military men. But you who leave from Munya to go and open your shop, you are afraid of the fear of the unknown because you can be picked up back in your house to ask why did you sell on that day? Now look at where the Zinon puts people at lock at, at, at the third corner. And at the end, it is now councils want to raise money and not because they want to they want to fight against ghost town. When they need this amount of money, oh yeah, go and steal. They seal number of shops. And on Tuesday, when is a Thursday, people flood the council and pay to the 50,000 francs. Do you tell me this is a government that works for the people? When you, the council, knows that these people are vulnerable already, their shops can be destroyed. Let me ask you, Javis is here. When the taxi was dis destroyed in Munya, till today, do you think that those taxi men have, been, have received compensation for working on a ghost town day? That's, that's it is not. It is not. For God's sake, we are looking at a problem that we have been examining for over seven years. And people still come on air and they blow grammar. The issue we're talking about killing. I've said earlier, nobody has any right to kill for whatsoever reason. But if I tell you that we are at war and they're killing us on both sides, Kedja will, 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 will sugar it, will sugar, will sugar it on his own side. We have some soya incidents in Belo. All of us know about it. We, have, we know about issues whereby Meeting men even in Boya, we just see a young man intercept you, go to your phone and say you are a scammer. Bam, they hold you there. You travel money on the spot. I mean, on the spot. That's kidnapping of the first order. I mean, on the spot. I witnessed what I'm hearing. I've intervened two times of about five university students who were in the hillocks. And they were going around. They were like, I asked what's on the issue. They said, No, uh, it's on the east, it's on the scammer. I said, Man, yeah, qua. Before they were released, it was we had to be at local heads. Imagine how much form of extortion. See, Mr. Leo, let's call the spade a spade. If you amber, you arrest a man and you ask him for money, it's kidnapping. If you mean it to you, hold somebody in broad daylight and tag him, you are a scammer and expect him to give you money on the spot and he travel that money by Momo or cause a family to come and give you, you have kidnapped. Keta knows this thing. So the crime is on both sides. Why will Keta come on air and blow grammar as if he is now Napoleon Bonaparte's first right hand general? These are the issues that kills us every day because we come to the platform of Mr. Liu. I will refuse to say the truth because we think we are looking for favor. A crime is being committed. Crimes are committed on both sides. That is the criteria of war, Mr. Liu. If you go to the Canada, whenever there is war, military they commit atrocities, rebels commit atrocities. It's the common criteria of war. Quote me anywhere. And so when it is happening, instead of us, like my brother is saying, blame game is not what pays. The question is, how do we stop this crime? Because they will also occur. I have military men in Boya and Bermuda who have constructed houses. Where they could not consult before. There are military officers who like doing what. Now, let me tell you what Keja does not know. Keja, I am now calling on you as an investigating journalist. Go to the military court in Bamenda and Boya. When you do your finding, you come and meet me. Let me tell you how much money people make in the name of amber and terrorism charges. 
hostility against the state, this and that, and they quote all of it. And before you know, you are coughing money out. I'm talking to someone who has witnessed them. Go to different areas they call Legion. That's the, that is the, the, the Legion, uh, that's the Jalamay Legion headquarters in all the regions. 70 persons are there as I speak now. Go and ask them, they said they were called in the corner, they were called in this area, and they go through. Go to Bamenda Central Prison and Boya Central Prison. I have some cases I'm still following up there. Then they said we pick along the line, peace. Mm. And for the peace, let us find out what the root cause of this problem. If not, then we alone cannot solve it. But we are alone cannot solve it because it is a national problem that can only be solved by one man. Mm. You call him the guarantor of peace, correct? And so, President Paul Bia is the only one. All the Iran boys bring grammar on any of CPD communicators cannot solve that problem. Thank you. Okay, uh, stop playing the blame game. How do we stop the blame game here, uh, Mr. Kedia, and work for an effective end to the bloodshed? Before I talk about uh, your question, I just want to be honest to the viewers. If you like, you interpret what I say. I send it again to social media. I don't care. But the truth is that knife way now your brother chuck you that you hot pass one in a mouth for side. We anglophone, the same people we are the one killing ourselves. It's painful. Than the one that is the military and the rest that come from different region. If you people like interpret it the way you want, I don't care. But us, you kill our own brother. We grew up in the same village. You know me very well. We went to primary school together. You kill without thinking. Then you say your own day. And uh, Mr. Leo, maybe some, maybe our brothers in the Northwest and South, some of them think that when they talk about Yaoundé, it's a person. Eh? They don't know that it's a government that they have their life. Eh? Like one minister earlier said that uh, no matter what is happening, you keep on drinking his matango. So why you inflict pain on your own? Who do you expect? I don't know how my people reason. I don't, I'm not here to play blame game that, the, yes, the military have done. I'm not saying that the military is perfect. Yes, the military is the legal one. They are sworn and oath. They are not supposed to hurt the people, 100% correct. But the Amba, our, our brothers, Anglophone, the Anglophone culture, we grew up together. It pains. They are not your brothers. It pains. They are not your brothers. They pain. Because it you lie against, against it. You don't tell you are the truth. You tell you everything is fine. You celebrate 45th anniversary and say everything is fine. Well, it's not fine. Yeah, you deceive them. No, no, you see, that's why you don't know. You're just with yourself. I don't need to tell you. I'm not your brothers. No, I don't need to tell you. I don't need to tell you. You are not your brothers. 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 That you're on the government, that you're on the government should come and talk. Now, bully the people, them. When I kill myself for this, I'm telling people the truth. If you like, tell me to say you're on the, what does you're on the, what's that? What does you're on the have to do? Mr. Mr. Kumlena just asked you here. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not a jumping and talking about you these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you why the international community is silenced. You look at it. But when it is a batty bomber killing a batty bomber, a mafia child, Bayangi, killing a Bayangi person. It is not between the government and civilian. A civilian that decided to kill themselves. So the sole responsibility stays with the government. And, and that is the truth. So if you like, you say what you want to say. Where my frustration comes from is that we are all anglophone and we are killing ourselves. If you people like you accuse the ministers, you are buying the children, have killed their buying the uh, 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 fire government. I work with the CPDM. The CPDM is different. So the government have their own. And all the ministers have their communicators that they discuss. But we should be honest. To mm -hmm. tell our brother that we should stop killing ourselves. We are the one killing ourselves. And the knife from a brother pains more than that of uh, an outsider. So we should stop killing ourselves. We should go into diplomacy. There is anglophone marginalization. And there are channels in which that can be handled. That is what we should look at. And not us killing ourselves. Now, for us to stop um, for us to stop all this, the honest truth is that our brothers that have picked up arms need to drop their arms. We are in a state for now. We we'll follow the legal process, uh, procedures on how we can bring the government down. We have senior diso uh, civil disobedience to the state. There are many ways where the people can rise. Yaoundé trembled. I mean, Yaoundé trembled on the 22nd of October and uh, on the 22nd of September and the 1st of October when the people did rise. There are many ways you can bring the government down. Yaoundé trembled. I say Yaoundé shivered on the 22nd of September and the 1st of October, when the people rise, the military were confused. Nobody knew what to do. That is the strength of the people. 
and the people have that power to do it and some villages are do, have done it and the rest can do it let our brother drop our arms and let's continue uh, our plead for to stop the marginalization of the people of northwest and the southwest region okay yes um, uh, the, the blame game uh, continues <laughs> yes but uh, has the, the international community actually forgotten about uh, the crisis we have seen how mobilized they are for the case of ukraine and today almost every discussion is centered around uh, gaza we saw an emergency united nations uh, session that took place we've seen meetings upon meetings are taking place in uh, egypt we've seen on to anthony blinken he was in jordan he was in uh, he's moving uh, wrong Turkey. yes what, what what is different with our situation uh, the thing is um conflict are put on a scale like when you have earthquake hmm. you have uh, at the metal scale, you have one, two, three, four, five. When at seven, mm. then you know that it's high, mm -hmm. and so it's conflict. Mm. And so they look at the proportion of the number of deaths per day, yeah. and which calls for an emergency session. That's why it's called an emergency session. As we speak, Gaza has ten thousand deaths of civilians, just in Gaza. We are not talking about the number of Israelis that were killed. We are not talking about Hamas fighters. That we are talking about civilians. So it, there's a need for a security council. And when we look at the back home, Bangor region, has neglected or is not thinking or is not monitoring what is happening in the northwest and southwest region. What is happening in the northwest and southwest region probably fall between a scale of three or four. Now, when it gets to a stage of, when it gets to that stage of five, then we can now start saying, and now the, the sad thing is that just when to the international community, when the U.S. Senate rose and said something about the crisis, it's the international community. When the Canadian government tried to mediate to have the Canadian peace talk, it's the international community. When we have the House of Lords talk about it, it's the international community. When yeah, we but they used to. Scotland, they used to. What? Yes, crisis. But I want to be fair with you that the response that we we'll have now is not, is not the response that we we'll have in 2018 when this crisis started from the international community because whether we like it or not, there are some gains that have been made by Cameroon's government, and there are some gains that the, the, the international community expect Cameroon government to make. For example, in 2019, 2018, we had red zone, where a lot of people migrated, even from Boya. But now Boya, the heart of Boya, is green zone. Now when you come now to Moluko, Moluko is here, you live there. Now you move now to other periphery, there are the red zones. So gradually, these are the zones that we have. But in 2019, we had a predominantly red zone. Now, the reaction of the international community at the time that you had everything red will be different from when you have now a red, a green, and a yellow zone. So they believe that since you have this zone, gradually the yellow move to the green migrate now to the yellow side and occupy a bigger green, and the yellow move now to a red, occupy a bigger uh, yellow, and now the red that move. So that's the situation, and that's why they are quiet. Now, there are some things that uh, have been said here which I want to clarify. It, the international community will not uh, will not be silent, even if it is a particular ethnic group fighting against a particular ethnic group. Let's not have that. As long as people are being killed, it's not because ethnic group A is fighting against military, then the international community will come. No. As long as people are being killed, for example, Rwanda, it was between the Tutsi and the Hutsi. And the, the Hutsi and the Tutsi. The international community intervened. Even you move to Nigeria, there are some areas where you have the ethnic Fulani conflict, uh, clashes. The international community have been reacting. So as long as people are being killed, it doesn't mean that because Anglophone are killing Anglophone, the international community cannot react. Of course, they will react. But the situation why they have not spontaneously react is simply because, one, they have other crises that are of predominant. Two, because probably it has moved from what we experienced as violence before, now it has been mitigating. So rather they expect that maybe the government of Cameroon is looking for measures. However, the time shall come when these persons will also be sanctioned privately. You know, diplomacy is something that sometimes you don't go and say it publicly. I tell you that there are some people till now, even in the armed separatist fighters, who have been categorized terrorists. But they don't, they have not announced that they are terrorists. They have been categorized terrorists. And their fight cannot be treated as such because they are already being another way in which they can write as civil disobedience. As they did in that Yaoundé Temple, where Yaoundé rose in 20 September 2022, I was in Boya, and that Yaoundé Temple where September where Anglophone rose in October 1st October. I was I want to tell you that that was the worst error that uh, Anglophones ever did in 2018 because uh, that was what cost where we are today. People were killed in the first of October 2018, and if we say people should rise again, we are possibly 
expecting another catastrophe. Oh, I don't, know, for that I don't I'm care who kills. <laughs> I know I don't care. I'm saying that in 2018, if we say I want a temple, oh, I, I had 27, even 27, <laughs> September, <laughs> even September 22nd, some people were killed no, in the no, corner. No, no, I'm no, telling you, no. was at the school. And there was a cat testify when the guys were marching. Second, when the road were blocked, I moved towards the CDC because I, there was no way I could get to Munya. I waited, the road were blocked, I had to pass through the CDC plantation. I want to tell you, five. One person was killed. Uh, was, uh, sorry, uh, Kate, one person was killed. Please, uh, so we, 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 have, we have to discuss another topic. The just land, go the land. Land. So what we are saying here, for people to rise, free all arrest and connection to this crisis. Grand General Amnesty. Close the door of DZ Arsenal at a specific time. All those who what bind us together is the love of equal distribution of resources, the love of autonomy, the love of below the law. No matter how many people rise, as our mothers rose up, they were beaten. Our mothers rose up, they were beaten. The same rising again. Those who want the people to rise should go and lead the protest and will join them. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, how do we get our elites, uh, civil society actors, and everybody the more engaged uh, to put an end to uh, these killings? Mr. Liu, you see, we must be intentional about this um, whole thing. Mm. To solve this problem, it needs a lot of intentionality. You must, that is, we must put ourselves as though we were the ones having the direct pain. Because I don't understand how to, in a, a certain forum, you get it, a, a, a militant of um, the ruling party was asked, how is the celebration moving in Manfe today? Yeah. Behaving as if nothing is, nothing is happening there in Manfe. Because I believe this is this is something that they could have said no. We are not even going to sell. Yeah. We need to send a message to Yaoundé saying that it is it is terrible here. Well, reason why reason team why team we team. cannot uh, go on with it's any celebration. But when you go ahead and you are celebrating and you are giving uh, uh, the public well, the, the impression team. that everything is fine, we are happy. I'm not saying you should not celebrate. I am not saying that you should not celebrate. But, but, but I'm no, not. no, if if the people actually respect what you are saying would they not be doing exactly they would they not be fulfilling the exact wish of those who, who, uh, yeah no the, 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 the action was to stop the celebration mm -hmm. so if they, is the, that not what you're saying <laughs> yeah. no, no the, the point is this mr liu mm -hmm. the point is this mr liu was it was it an accident <laughs> are you saying today what happened in Murphy was an accident no it, it was it was not an accident killing the killing Records uh, holds it that the killing happened at about uh, 4 a.m. You get it? They came and it was it was carried out. Okay. And uh, we have reports uh, men uh, unarmed gunmen. That is say it. amber. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, but... Unarmed gunmen carried out the massacre in Manfi. Mm. If you are saying amber, hello, you have your source. You have a reason to your you opinion. Amber. I'm, I'm not amber. No, you are the one telling me, but I doubt your source. So I have my opinion. Amber. You get it. So that is it. They say unarmed men carried out the massacre. Mm. Whatever the case, I already said it. We are not here for OD without sitting on the table trying to bring us on a round table but those involved the key stakeholders who ought to be on that round table discussion were absent reason why we want to submit that the 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 the, 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 the discussion did not produce the results that we expected so it is time to re-strategize and we call again another dialogue wherein we will bring in all the stakeholders all the you cannot be going into a diet okay bring is, them on board is, let them share their that opinion is, is, and you see how is, we can go that further is, that is the plea you are making to the government what yes. is the plea you are making to the other side to the other side we will tell um the 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 the, the, the uh gunmen um, that they should at least know that human life matters whatever the case let them drop the arms and let the government also carrying the arms left and right it is the ones that houses are being to think of an option b and see how it can work hmm. um what is the way out of <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to start it with you. Let fire just uh, call, uh, stay stays on. The part of major national uh, dialogue was organized already. Commissions were created. Actions are already being implemented on the uh, on field, like uh, the reconstruction and a host of others. What other way do you think um, 
away from government how can this issue be solved or oh, it's only the government oh we wait for the international community to professor maurice Camto has been advocating for quite a long time mm -hmm. that to solve the issue simply means the key parties must be present okay it does there's not just the puzzle this is political science we're talking about and when we talk about conflict resolution, if you use, use a wrong form, expect the results the other way around. So what are we saying here? We've been saying that if we are at this point in time, we have done, we have been in the, on the, so at the end of it, you see, there's a, there, there's a problem here, Mr. Leo. Each time there's a conflict, when you see some of us hold on the government, because the government is a legitimate party that we know that we can hold his or her testes. Mm -hmm. Which means we know that you are here. And so, it's like we he is mad and you are not mad and so at the end you don't have justification it becomes very very important for them to take the lead in the peace process but taking it you must be able to be diplomatic as i said people of neutrality neutrality simply means that i am coming i have a fight with Katie. i am calling for a meeting Katie, can you come and let's discuss i will not tell Katie that come and discuss in my palo because Katie comes to my palo i have an overhand I have an overhand that can tell my sons if he's not accepting yes let's just have him up and lock in the room you want joining dialogue because hear me very well, Yaoundé. In souls, into that, Mister Leo, you are a father. There are times you, you, your child commits an error, and you pamper the child after beating the child for some time. Boy, come, come, don't you think this is wrong? In that calm, when you see him reasoning with you, because you have come down from a father, and you are beginning the child to reason. I don't see what is wrong with that, because the spirit of arrogance is what is keeping us where we are today. Military force for this war to end, Mister Leo. I left from Bengui to, to from Bengui to Bamenda on Sunday. They have gone to K47. I said, ah, this will be see the They go from where they are. Mr. Leo, the things we are seeing on the ground now, I am God, I am praying that we should not see it again. Okay. And so, joining dialogue is the only way out with the relief. We'll be blowing hot grammar as Mr. Kenda keeps blowing every day. Immediately, not after. I said, now. But they don't know what they are doing. Yeah, we are uh, talking about we are talking about the crisis and not the CPDM now. Uh, Mr. Leo, 41. 41 years uh, since the accession to power of uh, His Excellency President Paul Bia. He's been ruling uh, the nation. There are some nice things uh, that he has achieved and also in, uh, in uh, Douala and uh, Yaoundé, not too, too good. And um, Kelly, are you starting uh, this uh, part of the uh, program? Uh, celebration, what are you guys are celebrating for? It is written in the book. Power, <laughs> the power that give, was given by God. And he is still there for the past 41 years is the grace of God. And he is doing his job. You remember in the Bible when we talk about Saul and the other that was blessed. And he went the wrong way and God turned on this. Sacrificed almost half of his life serving the nation tirelessly. Even before the last presidential election where he himself was thinking about going to his village because he loved going to his village. But what happened? The people, the in all divisions, subdivisions, <laughs> and his state. And today, when you look at the political situation of Cameroon, we have today that done this, done that. But I just want to tell him that Cameroon is one of the countries that have freedom of expression and freedom of speech in Africa. Where you speak, you are comfortable. Even in bar, you feel, you speak, you are comfortable. There are, there are countries like that. But in Cameroon, the democracy is there. The voice of the people is there. The elections are all there. And we know that we concerns electrical powers. In Cameroon, we are among the first 15 out of 45. Economy, first 15 out of 45. All these statistics. It is true that people also criticize because we want better. More is good. I will always want more. But President Pobia is a blessing given to Cameroon. It was but normal that a uh, party in Cameroon and the rest could come up and celebrate and thank him. For his strength in the economy today, Cameroon fits all the sub saharan Africa. They give them food to eat. If we close our border, Gabon will cry. They will not have what to eat. Cameroon is feeding them. Thanks to President Pobia. In Edu, which we thank President Pobia for doing a perfect and a good job. So we want to take this opportunity again to plead on President Pobia the first will because he said he would decide and he would tell us if he will go to the village or he will stay. But if he stays, 
which he should know that him as uh, the father of the nation who a domain where the president has excelled in which would that be um that's a very good thing the the way he has excelled in the commissions are just there but uh, the fact that people have been compensated in that way is good another domain which president Pope has done which is very good is the fact that all international meetings day in day out he has done well because at least as an old as as as, as, as an old father he he keeps the the, the 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 memory of what he had been with his old friends and so they should not stay alone they should be with him so at least compensation political compensation keeps him on a good footing for those who are who are around him but uh, pa i think uh, the new that was coming like the messiah to fill in the gutter on and is now get stage people dreamt to see things go the issues of that it ought to exist whether you like it or not mm -hmm. is, we had just one swimmer to yawned for one university but assuming that nothing was to change do you think that university could have been able to harbor so there are some factors that when they come in as population grows it is bound to bring some changes which whether you like it or not in terms of numbers now our worry has been that away from how the KDRs will praise that many schools have come. The question now is, for example, and everybody is saying, no, referral hospitals. Referral hospitals. I remember when uh, Paul Kagame brought for medical attention, beginning with the Minister of Health in Rwanda. What was his excuse? What was his justification? You cannot be a Minister of Public Health and you spend time going above for medical attention. No. Use the services you yourself have been asked to improve so that others can people, the medical facilities in Rwanda have improved. That chapter is closed. You attend the hospitals in any hospital anywhere in Rwanda for medical attention. And so at the end of it, we are thinking that in the whole of Mingui Center subdivision, who are living in Jikwa and uh, Ngi, O'Shea and coming to Mingui, yes. But now, if you say the schools have come up, cropped up in the quarters, our question is, what is the quality of education as of now? I will remind some of you that those who attended school in the early 60s, 70s, and 80s, from standard one to standard seven, speak good English than some of these, uh, some, of, some of the graduates we have now. And they can write perfect English. It means that something is, there's a missing link somewhere. And if we talk about the aspect of people going to school and coming out, what is the kind of training do we have? Do we have a system oriented in training people for history, physics, and chemistry? Journalists. You are what is it? Well trained by the government. And so if you have that, it becomes a call for concern. As I say, he could interject the way he thinks. Majority skill is not developed because the government huh? asked me to develop. Oh. I have done extracurricular research oh. out of it. Oh. Which means you get the garbage in oh. and you improve on the garbage and get to where you are. Any serious journalist in this country has worked upon improving himself. You're right. I am not talking whatever amount. But the <laughs> you cannot say that the government trained Mr. 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 has done a lot of research. Tell my journalists here, read books every day. Which means that what? If you rely <laughs> on what comes to you, research over because if you don't meet, meet up with that, mm. then you, you, are, you are missing already the trap. So personal fulfillment makes us to come out of Even the cage. You have the best and so at the end of it, I will tell you clean and clear that from what we have, as far as the aspect of what President Pobia has done, you will see there are some road networks that have been improved. Yes, if I don't relate it to other countries, I have the impression that we in real is that where we are supposed to be? How do we, one? Two, three resources. And if I could tell you, go to Dubai uh, in the early 80s, all the time. India has been a developing country. But India decided to carve a niche to develop their medical departments overnight, health department. And technology. And technology. Today, any heart surgery, complicated issues, brain surgery, and everything is India. Are we saying that we don't have what it takes? No. We have what it takes, but. Do we have a system that permits us to move with that? Redundant brains are at work. And so how do we come out of that? The government policies put in place have expired. It's a kangaroo system. And in the kind of kangaroo system, we expect anything to move in a kangaroo mood. And that's where we find ourselves where we are. And you ask somebody like Keja, what has the, no, it's God's given, no, it is this, everything is good. And deep in there, they know that it is a lie. I say deep in Keja, he knows. I have left with him in Bonaberia. You are say. educated so much because of him himself knows the two more reports. In the name of Kira, Kira, let him learn. Let him and I started asking. So I could tell you the few things I've been able to say in that that is how 
a CPDM inclined man will tell you that the state is doing well. But comparative to what we have in terms of resources, is that where we are supposed to be? The answer is no. And if no, what is wrong? Wrong policies in place with no aspect of vision. Look at it, for example. If every year we sent out the, 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 the seaport, for example, and the question is, if you have this number coming out, has the government been able to have a projection of how many cars will be in circulation in the next five, ten years? Once day in, day out, we will get the roads guard. And you find the road, work owners are blaming the city mayor. The city mayor is blaming the Minister of Urban Affairs. Minister of Urban Affairs is blaming the Minister of Public Works. And at the end, where are we today? It is a call for concern that good things and 95% call for concern that has taken us aback. And we are still moving backward. And even KGI himself is needs to be done. Because I move with you. I was in congestion with you. We discussed, and you we, uh, you're asking me when? When? <laughs> you look at me into my eye, and you lie <laughs> that <laughs> we just that. Mr. Fowler, Mr. Fowler, you lie. I will not tell you or someone is telling you. Why would you lie anywhere? Why would you lie? I don't want to tell you. Find the good old bangle. Lie on TV. Find the good old bangle itself. What them together? All right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Airline. Please, please, please. Yes, um, uh, Tamai uh, Travis, where are um, uh, any leader, no matter how good or bad they are, they are first of all human beings, they have the good and they have the bad, they have the ugly. However, we cannot also um, deceive ourselves by not also saying that President Pobe has some side that he has actually succeeded in. And there are other side which is work in progress, and the other side which would be the court. They are caught with the French. If you look at the colonial court with, uh, the, with the French, uh, President Paul Bia in that domain is the Mama Asim Goeta and Ibrahim Chari are doing with muscular nature with the French, but President Bia is doing that uh, in a civilian manner, peacefully. And if you look at the trade between France and Cameroon, it has actually dropped as compared to before. So President Pobia has moved for expansion of trade with other nations and not just limiting themselves with France. And if you see if the French has about 10% now of business interest or business trade with Cameroon, and that is thanks to President Bia. And you also look at some aspect which he has been able to do in terms of the, the freedom of communication. Uh, that was introduced in 1990 where the freedom of mass communication was launched and in 1992 when the National Communication Council was opened. At the demand of the press, I want to be uh, very honest with you that before we used to have the pre-publication censorship that gave room for senior divisional officers governors to become editors-in-chief where media organs will have to write their story and go and give to these officials to look before they are published and there was also a penalty on even somebody who reads a paper that had uh, something bad so even the printer was also punished based on that law but president probably in 1990 the reintroduction of multi-party politics that ushered in the uh, freedom of communication law uh, gave room for freedom of speech don't ask me whether there is freedom as far after speech. That is also another argument on its own self. But we are looking at now the freedom of speech where individuals were able to air their mind. And so the formation of the National Communication Council. And we look at that the audiovisual sector, individuals did not have, have the right to open private broadcast system. And President Paul Bia brought in a mechanism which the National Communication Council was formed in 1991 as an advisory body and in 2000 prime minister peter mafani mosonge laid down the modalities of opening up private audiovisual sector which became known as the prime ministerial order in 2000 it was under this law that you started we started seeing the sprouting of private audiovisual sector across the, the nation and now we now have the proliferation of this audiovisual sector however president probably also from the domain of uh, sports, Cameroon is pride itself as one of the best uh, in Africa with major uh, stadia. I'm, I want to say that we cannot refuse the fact that when it's good, sometimes let's give it to President Pobia. We have the best pitches in in, 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 in in Cameroon. If you look at comparatively with other nations, I know many people may want to go with the theory of relativism. To bet, uh, relativism, I don't want to go to relativism. I just want to be positive so that I look at the area which he has excelled, excelled well. So the domain of sport, look at the stadia. And uh, also at the level of um, the domain of education, though it is an area which is still limping, but however, we must also give it, uh, give President Pobi a thumbs up because there's a recent decree that has been signed now which indicates that universities must have industries and uh, also own 
companies that they produce because uh, the university should not just be producing so in order to producing graduate but they should have something tangible so each university now needs to have a working facility that should be able to create job creators and not job seekers so once you say that these are strive being made however as a human being he has his own downside now let me look at his own downside i want to say that i was really really taken about when i saw uh, people celebrating 41 years when these same people bypassed the heavy traffic had difficulties in traffic across Douala, caused by bad roads and sometimes also the low small size of road and i was also surprised to see the same people who have problems in electricity in their neighborhood uh, chanting and celebrating when the same person will go dark in their quarters mm -hmm. and to that i am saying that there are villages in Cameroon who have never which have never had electricity since the day we regain independence in this country and that is a core concern i want to also say that president Bian needs an improvement in the level in which ministers are held accountable i believe that in a country that things work we should not be talking about do you know who i am one of the fundamental principles to know a nation in decline it's when individuals start saying to connect qui je suis. Because do you know what I mean that you are ruled by law and not of law? In civilized country and country that things work, is you hear, do you know I can sue you? I can call the police for you. But when somebody starts telling you, do you know who I am? It's a problem. As we speak, a lot of those who are celebrating today will go back to their houses without electricity. As we speak, a lot of those who are celebrating today have problems with roots. As we speak, a lot of those who are celebrating today in the neighborhood, his account rarely passes. And the day they pass is a Christmas to pick the dead around. What the are you saying? What are you saying? That um, the fact that the president is in power and chooses to celebrate it, they should not celebrate it because. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying that it's a rhetorical reason because mm. what we are saying is that I've given his success. I'm talking mm. about areas that he's found wanting mm. and that those who are charged with this activity, mm. his leadership style has not been able to get these people accountable because these people who are supposed to execute his tax don't carry out the function okay. for example look at the road in Douala. it's not president Pobia will come and construct this road no president Pobia gives a vision he has a vision and you as a minister you are the flag bearer of that vision and now when that minister doesn't do this job that minister goes and celebrate president Pobia, who he has allowed his job not to do, he don't he doesn't do his job but he goes and celebrate and now we give everything down to the head of state or which the head of state believes in you and has given you that vision so what we are saying is that these people instead of celebrating president Pobia, should go and walk the walk so that they should be the brand ambassador for the entire nation to celebrate president Pobia. Okay. cbdm need no branding the only branding that cbdm need is that people should do their job and take it well when you do your job you don't need an advert people will come and align themselves to your party okay uh mr evans uh chair uh, president paul bias 41 years stay in power is celebrated mostly by his close uh, collaborators how helpful have they been over the decades uh, to him um have they helped him meet his vision uh, mr kum mm. the truth is the close collaborators of president bia are not honest to him because if they were actually honest with President Bia, and then I'll start with the re reacting on what Mr. Kedia said, giving a motion of support that at uh, 90 he should still, you know, go in. It is, it is, it is, it is really, it is really disturbing mm -hmm. because medical reports will tell you when you are 90 and above. It is, it is, it is, no, it is a problem. <laughs> I've not said the the the, 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 the president's <laughs> medical report. What I'm saying is this medical report. They will tell you that when a person is aging out, the brain itself does not function well. That is the truth. So imagine now that uh, President Pobia, we all know, is already aging out, and they are still telling him to stand and continue to be the president. You, you see, Cameroon has a lot that needs to be done. And the President Bia, we are seeing now, we are not saying he is not capable. He has proven his worth to an extent. But now we are saying it is time he gives it a rethink if it is actually worthwhile for him to continue because if we are looking at uh, some of his um say achievements it is true we cannot take people's glory away from them he has done that which he could do to make cameroon what it is today we can go in the domain of uh, education 
although some people want to water it down but it is there it is an achievement all the 10 state regions of this country today can boast of state universities gone are those days when someone will have to leave uh, uh, northwest and travel to yaoundé only because you want to uh, have yourself enrolled in the university of yaoundé today you don't find those problems we go under the domain of uh, employment we have youths today who have been employed just of recent we had uh, the close to 2000 phd holders who were being employed as well we also had uh, the 25000 uh, uh, recruitment which took place all of these are his achievements which cannot be taken away from him but the question of how effective has all of these achievements of president brb is a whole debate on its own because if we need to go into still this educational sector and evaluate we will see that we have lecturers who are there and who have not been paid some of them are even thinking of bringing up strike activities we go into the secondary sector we have secondary school teachers as well who have not been paid so the effectiveness of his achievement is an entire debate on its own so to his close uh, collaborators mr leo we will say that there should be intentional in the way they handle the affairs which have been given to them because i will go back to the uh, manfe massacre today going to manfe and you are celebrating on a day like this you are sending the message that we are having peace in manfe you are sending a message that everything is all right what you are seeing on the media it is wrong or oh, they are just things picked from maybe another country. Oh, no, but the truth me, is that let me, let we have you, problems. Let, yeah, let me let me let me put it back to you. When I asked my question to you, had to do with the collaborators of the president of the republic, eh? though you have been saying other things, but let's even go by what you are saying. When you say that people are not telling the truth to the president of the republic, are we saying that he does not watch TV? He does not read newspapers. He is completely is in one is confined in one dark office. Put yourself in the place of President Pobia. What will be happening in this country that you cannot watch through the TV or listen to radio or read newspapers? The truth is that President Bia, I'm not saying he does not watch TV, mm. but we all know he must have a lot of things on his hand. Mm. Reason why he has people who work with him and uh, we are saying that the people his close collaborators they are not being honest with him because i want to believe that if they were honest things will not be the way they are today are you saying when he we, meets he meets with these uh, guys let's let's assume that the ministers will not tell him the truth but he has friends, friends. who visit him unofficially in, i'm sure at his home will tell me that he will not receive friends are you telling me that when he meets with some of these uh, members of the diplomatic corps they don't evoke things like this him mr liu the truth is even if they evoke such things mm -hmm. but those who have responsibility to carry out tasks which have been assigned <coughs> to them mm -hmm. they need to do that with all honesty mm -hmm. for instance i'll take the case of um the the, the problem plaguing our regions english-speaking regions today mm -hmm. how do you explain to us that amidst a crisis like this we had a reconstruction committee being put in place how can you be talking about reconstruction when people are still being killed houses are still being uh, you know burnt businesses being destroyed mm. this is where we say the people are not being honest because if i were to be there as an advisor i would tell you look mr president at this point we cannot be talking about reconstruction because we still have war in this area people are still being killed in this area let us focus first on solving the problem let us focus first on seeing that let there be a return of peace and after that we can now think of how we can revamp bring back to life these communities because if we want to bring back to life these communities when we still have this active war when when every blame is, ev is, when every blame is, when, ev when every blame goes to those who are telling lies to the president of the republic what responsibilities do we now please in the hands of the president of the republic he himself because he's the commander in chief the who is national security yes he <laughs> is the commander in chief and everybody says they're not telling him the truth are we saying he's a dummy no the president the president is not a, a, a dummy mr liu but we will want to urge that he should do more mm. as far as you know having close collaborators is concerned he should that is there should be more investigative uh, 
mechanisms put in place so that he can have um, direct first-hand information on what is actually happening <laughs> on ground. Okay, but we are also living on uh, in the social media uh, world. I'm sure even the wife sees most of the things happening on social media and the daughters and uh, possibly <laughs> the sons. It's true. Yeah, yes, of course. So, the son was in uh, Bancolo. Banco, is it? Yeah, Banco, I, 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 I really find it very hard to yeah, say. For it to last like when mm, uh, that happened. Mm. Now, <laughs> for every, uh, Tayong, the, let us look at uh, the president's fight against um, corruption and embezzlement. Has he uh, done well? Because we have an entire cabinet at uh, the level of um, Kondengi. Some of them are here uh, in uh, uh, Douala. The president, has he done enough to stamp this uh, vice out of Cameroon? No, no, not at all. I say not at all. <laughs> where, we have, where we have people who have been arrested. Uh, Mr. Liu, mm -hmm. I don't know if you are a government that listens to advice, like KDR who should have transmitted the message with immediate effect. No, but they should be listening In the to fight you. against corruption, I say it's not effective. Why? If you catch far Elvis who has embezzled hundreds of millions and put in Konenge, what is the benefit of that? If I'm sick, you rush me to the hospital because you will not want me to die. I eat very well there. I live well. I am not in Kondenge. I'm not like those who are in Kosovo, in Kondenge, which is one of the hottest places whereby I will see what happens. No. In prison, I have my air-conditioned room. Well furnished. The day I'm packing in, we saw what happened recently in the case of Martinez Zobo. The one of the officials who was, in, who was, who was accused, had to refurbish his prison department. Flash screen TV entered, everything entered, air condition. That is not prison. Let these guys not be deceiving us. No, no, he cannot go. <coughs> Mr. Leo, the point is simple. As I said, let us borrow good things from countries that have done good things. Korea, China, the Middle East in general, when they started developing, corruption was a problem to them. They took even drastic laws that I'm not saying we should take, but drastic laws of even eliminating. In China, those who have done uh, who have done a little bit of communist history now, presently, with Xi Jinping and the rest, to them they believe that when you embezzle a single franc, you have killed someone in that country because that money would have helped save a life or maybe revamp a road that would have caused accident in terms of pothole not being repaired. It's a serious crime. And so at the end, they have life sentences and even death penalties for those depending on the heavy, depending on the amount you embezzle. And that is why the mayor of Peking in China was given life jail sentence. What he embezzled was not more than 300,000 francs here, but it was a serious matter in court. This is an example we're talking about. We're talking about the fight against corruption. Why will over 25 former government ministers in prison and they are still stealing money? I watched the other day on media, COVID gate, people receive medals. I am investigating COVID gate. When our bags of rice that were given for COVID, we don't know where KJ has not commented on that, <laughs> sitting here. And those people, we have more than 15 of them whose files are at a special, special criminal court as I speak now. But you could see a government official giving them a pat on their back <coughs> for managing COVID money perfectly well. Are we, are we fools? Kedja, do we resemble Nikompos? No! Because the aspect of corruption is the gypsy puzzle game. If I am an ambassador, why do I live in a VIP prison? No! I should live under the heat, sleep on the floor to know that embezzlement is not good. But above all, they should be able to recover the money. That's why, I have, that's why the only case I saw that was joining was that of Professor Joel Mendoza of Blessed Memory. Because I know that when he was arrested, first thing he admitted, and even all the money was not there, three quarter of the money was furnished back into state treasury. I did, I did the follow of that story. And I asked myself, but if they were arresting people and they were owning up to put back the money to treasury, why do we keep them there? At least that remorse full act of carrying out that kind of action has really been proven. And so at the end of it, look at the amount of monies that these persons are keeping. 
and they are there in jail how does it serve us absolutely nothing do we call that justice no and others still continue to embrace as i speak that at the heart of covid gate story Javis will know about what I'm talking because he investigates some of those stories. Marks of rice that were given at the early days of the conflict. At the early days of the conflict. Uh, nobody knows where that Because it's nobody knows how it had it went. So there are many things that if you want to talk, you have high blood of a night. What is good about the justice of embezzlement is what is beat my imagination. I said sometimes that if a government is serious, there should be check and balances of how people manage state funds. What is causing a minister to get into a car? disguised as a normal passenger to move to the road to see what transpired on the road then you can arrest a driver and the police officers exchanging money take them to trial at the high court in Bonanjo in front of media broadcasted live state media my media prime and before you know it two hours jail sentence bam nobody will be invested again because they don't know who's in the car now guys are everywhere as a new normal they got illegal controls okay. making money day in day out is that the kind of government i'm talking about <coughs> Embezzlement is everywhere. And the cause people are in jail. And their cases are there every time. So they have, some of them have their, their case have been, case file have been forgotten. And it depends on who have the money. If you have the money, your case file is, is hitting up. Is that the justice we're talking about? Everything has expired. Kenya, you both have expired. And that's why we are saying that in the present dispensation, we keep losing billions of francs CFA. Look at a small V. Custom, custom officer who gets to work today within a year he's building a skyscraper how much is his salary and people are fighting to get into the gendarme and they tell you the money you pay to get to the road safety department what they call routier it's even from the ordinary gendarme eh? and when you get it you are fighting to recover the money overnight <laughs> kenya knows what i'm talking about kenya, you come kenya, and play pontius kenya, pilot here kenya 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 tell yaoundé that all is not well the country has collapsed in terms of <laughs> embezzlement from okay, all fa, directions fa, fa, we we let me get um i'll get let me take uh, three three messages uh, from those uh, watching. Okay, uh, Emil, writing from Jotin. Good evening to you, Emil, and uh, to you, Lister Montana, who says, uh, "Good evening, Mr. Leo, and the panelists. Uh, it is indeed uh, sad to watch our loved ones uh, perish in such a manner. May God help us, uh, Lister. Good evening to you. Say hello to your mother out there in the nation's uh, capital, Daisy." In uh, Kumba says, Good evening, Mr. Leo, and to all the panelists. It's hot uh, this evening. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, Kedia, we saw a motion of support from the West uh, region asking the President of the Republic to stand uh, 2025 for presidential elections. And uh, they have been coming from almost all the divisions and uh, regions of Cameroon uh, to say that um, the CPDM is very confident of. Uh, the achievements of uh, President Paul Bia and are looking forward to having him re-elected come 2025? You see, politics is to win power and conserve it. And uh, in politics, we don't change the winning team. Okay. And uh, President Paul Bia has been there. And of course, he's doing uh, his best and we are supporting him. I've heard all type of uh, analysis to regards to him on various issues. But what is very important is that in the constitution of Cameroon, we have the we don't have the limited age per se highest, but uh, we know the the least age that you must have before running for that position. But there is no uh, limited age above that you would see that uh, somebody cannot run in. So uh, the people call are there. The ruling Cypriot party who want to maintain their champion and we are telling him that he should go ahead. However, President Paul Bia, of course, is a man of his own way that he takes his own uh, decision. And he has said that uh, at the end of his mandate, he will decide, of course, if he will go back to the village or he will stay. If he feels, of course, that he is fit and is ready to stay, we will support him. And if he says that he wants to go back home, we will still support him. It's his decision. But for now, us militants of the party will see him as the best person to champion the affairs of the party and the affairs the of the state to ensure that everything uh, move on smoothly. President Pobia is highly informed, very, very highly informed. He's a fan of fun, for instance, in the Northwest. He talks with many chiefs. He, he knows what's happening there. He does not need to go and meet a minister, no. 
He has his personal friends all over. There are people in Dub that he visited, even during the uh, 1990s, that he visited with his helicopter that we all saw. So we should not think that he does not move. We should not look at the official movement and his personal private movement within the country to give certain analysis to say that he does not have information. He does. And with the case of reconstruction, which my co-panelists talked about, even in war, when the hospital is banned, as they are looking for peace, that hospital is supposed to be reconstructed because it is a center of human rights where people need to be treated is their fundamental right. So there are certain issues that even in war, even in Gaza as we talk now, children still need to go to school. Hospitals are still to be constructed. We saw medicine coming from Egypt going there because the people need help. So we should be aware of all these things and not give blames. And about issue of road, yes, there are problems of road in Douala and in Yaoundé. But we should not take Douala and Yaoundé to analyze the entire Cameroon and keep Limbe away because roads are good, keep Bafusam away because roads are good, keep Garewa away because roads are good. I said Bafusam, Mr. Fire Tayong. The roads are good? Yes, West Region. Has the, tell me which road in the West Region that is bad. Okay. I tell me I one. Have you got to buy me single? Pardon? Have you gone to Bamisinge, Bamenju? Have you gone there? Oh, you're calling somebody's compound. Uh, <laughs> you see? I am I'm talking about Bamenju. <laughs> Look at your life. Please. I am telling you that. Are you going to Noon? Are you going to Noon? Yes, the road there. Bafusam has good roads. What is wrong with you, Mr. Kedem? Because they are watching you now. Bafusam has good roads. I said, the minister, the minister of public work is there. What are you there. saying? The minister of public work is there. The you should learn the geography of Kedem, my brother. And move. I go to Bafusam. You will not take the road of Bafusam because it's not completed in Bafusam. It's not completed in Bafusam. It's not completed to analyze it as the West. I'm talking West region. No. Have you gone to Koptamo? If you don't know. Let me call the places. If you don't know, not today that the West region is one of the regions with the best roads. Look at them. You can look at what they are saying. Okay. Dude, travel in Cameroon, my brother. If you don't uh, know, uh, no, uh, the uh, is doing things. Uh, the West Region uh, has good roads. Uh, 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 Limbe has just good roads and the rest. Just not, yeah. uh, after all being said, <laughs> the President of the Republic, all his sector, he has done it and it is moving. Mm. There is only one sector that I will concur uh, with my co panelists and uh, even the head of state, the President of the Republic, he himself is aware. That, uh, he's aware about rats. We have rats. We have rats that uh, don't want to see any granite to pass around. And he himself, he said, on the The issue of corruption is really uh, something that we are, we, are, we are really fighting, which I cannot debunk. And of course, we've been having some difficulties in that uh, domain, which I cannot refuse. But a part of that, President Pobia is doing a good job. If you take any sector in Cameroon, you classify it in Africa, you see that it's been in 15. If my co panelist, Mr. Javis, will tell me that some military will celebrate and go by without electricity, but I'll still tell him that among 54 countries, Cameroon is among the first 15 with good electricity. If you like, you see around us, Nigeria and the rest, we are doing good. Yes, we want the best. That democracy will always want the best. But I'll tell you people confidentially and openly that everything is going on well in Cameroon, except the issue of corruption and, of course, the crisis in the northwest and southwest region that we wanted to come to an end. And, of course, the issue of Boko Haram that is still disturbing in the north. Apart of that, then we are in a good foot in, in Cameroon. Okay. Uh, corruption has been difficult uh, to eradicate, like uh, Kedia himself is saying. Tamay uh, Travis, what else can the President of the Republic uh, do to get his collaborators to uh, do exactly what he, he, has, um, he has in his uh, manifestos? For example, we know of uh, projects that are fit, uh, dragging, uh, like uh, the projects for the construction of the, the route uh, that is expected uh, to link the dual carriage uh, route, linking uh, Douala and uh, Yaoundé. We saw the pains uh, through which uh, the, the birth of, of the stadia in Yaoundé and uh, Douala and a lot of uh, other projects. How do we get many collaborators do and deliver uh, respecting deadline? I think the first thing is to do away with uh, party discipline. In 2012, mm -hmm. President Pobia made a speech. It was a speech of acceptance that President Pobia knows what is happening in this country. He talked about inertia. He talked about administrative bottlenecks. And he questioned the fact that why is it that the nation is not growing? 
That was in 2012. He doubles down again in 2013 when he made that speech. It means he knows that his collaborators are the problem. He knows. And now they, you say, what should we get to, so that he can actually things can move? Those who are watching us can go and Google the speech of President Popia in 2012 and in 2013. He brought out core issues and accepted and said, there is a problem and talk about inertia. And uh, asked a lot. In fact, 2012 speech was about question, question, question. Why, 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 why? And now we expect um, that the collaborators will do an effective job. So one of the reasons why you see the collaborators are working the way they are is because of party discipline. I think there should be a clear distinction between the CBDM party and the government of Cameroon. These two oftentimes ministers misuse them and sometimes don't actually do the job because of party discipline. I want to tell why do I say there should be a separation of party discipline? Because there's a tendency where people within a party want to gain favor. They see you carrying out a particular action that will benefit the interest of the people and say you are going against the state or you are going against the party rule. And what is the party rule? I don't understand. Every party rule should be based on promoting the value and the mission of the party. I want to tell you that if you look at President Paul Bear's book, he has a good, if it's implemented, Cameroon will be an El Dorado. If you look at the book that was written about the New Deal, if it's implemented, there will not be, Cameroon will be the top in terms of Africa. If it's, if it goes there, why? It has not been well implemented because some people feel that President Paul Bear has a lot of administrative tolerance too. This issue of administrative tolerance is what is killing because we see that uh, he's behaving more of a, more than a, a, a father in like a priest. That thing that, well, let's just give them more time, they'll repair. Let's give them more time, they'll repair. And that's why you see when people were saying people were stealing money, he said, where are the proofs? He the proofs. And when proofs started coming, people were being arrested and arrested and arrested. And now, this is what I think we should do. The first thing is, President Pobia should have a calendar of activity to move across the nation, as other presidents do, as Aijo did. Aijo personally supervised projects. Aijo went to Lise Bilang Moliko, GTTC. Aijo went to major projects. How often does President Pobia move in this nation? I don't want to talk about the one that came that talk in which private visit, because private visit and Nicodemus visit are not official visit. And we know that wherever the president goes, development follows. Even if it's just for a day. When the president went to Boya, we saw the effect. Roads were constructed. We saw the effect. When the president went to Bamenda for the military celebration, we saw the effect. When he went to Ebolowa, <laughs> for those chapters were abandoned there, we saw how the effect. So how often does the president move within the nation? If the president had gone to Northwest and Southwest, even till now, I'll tell you this crisis will be mitigated. Instead of, at the day President Pope has stabbed his leg in Bamenda, people will sing, Popo, 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 Tomanda, Nepa, Fini, or A to D. The day he steps in his leg in, in, in Boya. Why? Because people want to see their president. When they did, so the president should have this calendar of activity. The president of Kenya, I'll give you an example, William Samuel Ruto, he tore around his country back to back. Even the one in Tanzania, the, the woman in Tanzania, back to back. Paul Gagami, Kagami, back to back. You have to visit because there are some visits that you go, it makes your people to tremble. So what we know is that the president has been working, but there's that need for work in, uh, improvement. He should have this activity and say, okay, I have a seven-year mandate. Within these seven years, maybe one of the year, each year I visit, I should visit seven regions within the seven years. Because he has been in power for how long? For 41 years. How, of how many regions has the president, has the president visited for 41 years? Concurrently, how many divisions? For 41 years, you have been in power for 41 years. How many? If you give me up to 15 K there, then I'll rest my case. 15 divisions. I'm talking about divisions. 15 divisions. If you go to you will go to some divisions. Divisions. We look, see, I'm giving you even okay. we are, we, 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 we are, we are out of time. Yes, um, the. Militants want a President Paul Bia to stand elections for 2025, and um, the mobilization is already uh, start, started at the level of uh, the CPDM. Is it time also for the other guys uh, to start working? The, the opposition? 
Yes, it is It is time for the opposition parties to start working, of course, and they've started. It's not like it's time. They have started already. Hello. Yes, Did because you? we... we no. <laughs> they have started, they, they've started already. You see, even the SDF, the SDF is active. They, they have their chairman now, and very soon we'll start hearing of uh, their own uh, motion upon support and stuff like that. So it is time for all political parties to start working for 2025 and uh, if they must uh, uh, ask for victory then they should be intentional in their working what do i mean by intentionality here they should forget about actually actual uh, system of politics which is scratch my back as crash your own because politics nowadays you need to put first the civilians in front of you you act in their shoes you feel what they are going through and you see how you can solve their problems but if we continue to focus on how we can enrich ourselves out of politics that is where we are getting it wrong so the opposition parties we have today i will not lie many of them are not there because they they they, they, they are working for the common good of the population no majority of the political parties which we can at some point call the mushroom parties they are there just for their personal benefit so if they say it is time it should be time to serve the people it should be time to correct the wrongs of president Bia. it should not be time for them to start thinking of how they can make their accounts very fat and large okay we want to thank you all for coming yeah, no, you, 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 say, uh, you say you say you I just want to no, tell no, no, Cameroonians that uh, in Africa, Cameroon is the highest country with foreigners. More than four million Nigerians, Senegalese, and that's an it's because Cameroon is a safe heaven. And if Cameroon is a safe heaven, then we need to say uh, tell President Pobia a lot of thanks for making Cameroon a safe heaven. That's just all I wanted to say. Thank you for coming, Kedia. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be on your platform. Special greetings to your institution for always giving us uh, this opportunity to come here and give our own view to our Cameroonian people, hoping that when they listen to us together, we'll build our nation because Cameroon belongs to us. After the issue of party politics whatsoever, we still remain Cameroonians and we need to make it a better place for our children and our children's children. Thank you for coming, Fa. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure. As I said, uh, thank God you will be investigating the situation in Bengui yeah. uh, to find out exactly the mafia in the Inja village uh, scenario and the Acha Atugi, which we have a particular concern for it too. But I think at the end of it, I'm glad being here. And uh, the watchword I will say is this anybody, anyone who sits, violates, natural scientific biological procedures to say a man of above 80 years should still be president in this country that man is the son of lucifer the first because it is abnormal it means that the people don't love president Pobia. these are people who want to hide behind president Pobia to commit crimes they know themselves out of close to over 25 million you cannot tell me one person is the Alpha and Omega to rule till the kingdom come. This is not a kingdom. Keja, you missed your track and all of you have expired from Yaoundé. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you for my media prime for making such an exciting program wherein we can come and contribute to nation building. So one last word, I just want to say that it is time for peace. I don't know how the peace will come, but I just believe it is time for peace. It is time to get on the round table and discuss and we think of a way forward. And uh, it is time for political opposition parties to forget about being the main leading opposition party, forget about being the richest opposition political party and focus on the common good of the people which they claim they are here to serve. Thank you. Thank you to Chavis for coming. Uh, thank you, Mr. Liu. And uh, I want to say that those who want the people of Northern and Southwest to rise against Amber, I am behind you as long as you go to your village and lead and we'll follow you together. KJ will take the lead. We'll fight against this if you take the lead and don't go with Army. Let's go together at their different villages and fight. It's changing in the Thank you very much uh, for <laughs> watching. And um, I'm sure Wednesday or Thursday we are going to be revisiting what took place in. Mamfi, uh, today when we would have gotten uh, more credible information on what actually happened. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed.
Bye-bye.